everybody. Welcome to Rana's Radar. Look behind me. Chevy's Corvette. That's what's happening today and tomorrow. So if you're in Pigeon Forge here at the Lecon Center, awesome show. Corvette Expo is where I'm at. And there's going to be awesome interviews coming this week. But before all that, let's have a chat with Steve and Greg. How's it going, you two? Very good. Very good. It's quite a turnout. Yes, very, very good. This is absolutely beautiful. We've got the sun shining as well. The crowds are just pouring in and this is only Friday. Yes, and Saturday's still going to be a great day. Saturday's going to be a great day. I'm putting this out tonight here on Friday night and especially for people in Tennessee and even surrounding areas. If you can come over, this is an awesome show. What can people expect you to? So we have a tremendous uh, swap meet. We've got a park and show with we'll have 700 plus vehicles outside. We have 130 cars inside, some of the nicest Corvettes and Chevy show cars in the nation. Uh, the 100,000 square foot building completely full. Um, this has been a tremendous turnout. We had a little rough weather this morning, but it's good now. It's good now and it's even gonna be better tomorrow. Yeah. Chevy's in the Smokies and the Corvette Expo. Yes. Two shows, two yes. great shows in one location. Yes. C10s, Camaros. You know, we've even got a 56 Chevy inside. Novas. Uh, a variety of cars just to complement the Chevy product. Absolutely. And you know what? I checked out some of the awards. Yes. For those people who are just finding out about this, can they rock up tomorrow? Yes. And can they still get judged? Yes. That's what we want to hear because exactly. those awards look pretty cool. Very, very cool. Greg found those. They came from California. Uh, excellent job we've had a lot of compliments on the awards they look really good check it out you guys here it is on the screen these awards look absolutely spectacular what kind of awards and um are we going for we have of course the top 25 we also have a top 10 in the chevys but we also have best chevelle best camaro best c10 truck and we also have a best of show that have LED lights around them. So the best of show can be either a Corvette or a... Corvette has its own. Best but of Chevy and the Shamokis has its it also. Okay, okay. But on top of that, there's a best of show for a Chevelle. Wow. I've got a best of show for it. A best original, best Malibu, a best SS, a best modified Chevelle. Can you tell I, he likes Chevelle? I like Chevelle. <laughs> we can tell which portion of the show you're a part of. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to give these guys something to look forward to. I want them to come and embrace Pigeon Forge and to enhance this show. I want to give back. Yeah. And. You're an absolute car guy. You guys, if you remember, Greg has been on the channel before with your C10 yes. truck. So we know you're a car guy. And Jinx, we know you're into Corvettes. I've had a couple Corvettes. Absolutely. Over the last 35 years. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful machines. And what I love about your show is we're going to get a whole variety of different Corvettes. And something else to look out for, hopefully, is the new E-Ray. So, yes, indeed. And we do have two E-Rays here the uh, National Corvette Museum Motorsports Park took delivery on Monday in Detroit and drove them straight here. They made a few stops. You can check out their Facebook. And these cars are beautiful. This is, there's some, it's some of the, it's two of the first 100 E-Rays. And if this is the first public viewing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, at a court, at a court, the first public viewing at a car show. Yeah. I mean, you probably couldn't go to a car dealership and look at one yeah. as they produce them, but not at a car show. They come to bring them out to the public. Yeah. For, they want to put some miles on them. They're going to take them back and start racing them. And, gonna start racing. <laughs> and that's the stuff that I'm going to be getting in my interview. Here's a sneak peek, both of them right here. There's a lot happening from the wheels to the electric motor plus the V8 in there. There's a lot, but you have to wait for that interview separately, everybody, so I could get the facts right and I'd get it wrong. <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's a lot, there's a lot of different stuff, but very cool. I'm glad to have them here. It's, it's awesome to have them because we've got these here, 2024 models, and then we've got right all the way up to 53. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's if, if you're into Corvettes, this is the place to be. But the Chevys alone, I've been checking out some of the C10 trucks in there. Yes, we've got some nice C10 trucks. Absolutely, and that's what I love. Lecon Center is awesome. 
Thank you. Indoor, outdoor, and especially with the sun shining like this, it doesn't get better. No, yeah. ma'am. What can what do people need to do to get involved? At this stage, I'm guessing just show up. Just come and show up. Yep. You Bring your car, drive through the gate. We'll get you signed up for the parking show, and. Look forward to seeing there's a lot a lot of great cars here a lot of great cars here you guys the staff here is absolutely phenomenal the people from the gate directing everybody friendly faces all around it's going to be a beautiful weekend get over here to pigeon forge and come over to the lecon center come see us thank you let me show you guys what else is on the inside just to inspire you so you know what to expect thanks you guys thank you thank you All right, everybody, let's have a chat with Ronald and how, get a bit more information on this Nova 1970. Looks beautiful. How's it going? It's great. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well and Chastity as well. A little bit camera shy, but that's okay. Ronald, how are you going and how are you enjoying yourself here at Chevy's in the Smoky? I love it. This is the first time I've ever been here for a car show. I've been here to see cars, but it's the first time that I've ever participated in a car show here. Um, You're a little this, long way from home. I'm, I'm about four and a half hours away from home. Um, we left early Wednesday, Wednesday morning to get here to move in Wednesday mid midday, put the flooring down, get everything ready for people to look at. And um, this is Barry. Barry. His name is Barry. He was named Barry by one of my cousins. My grandfather's nickname was Barry. So we have a show board on the other side of the car and it, it shows the name Barry and tells about my grandfather. Well, let's go have a look at that board okay. and then I do want you to tell me about your grandfather before we have a look at the Nova in detail. 1970 Chevy, Chevy Nova. Yes, Super sport. Now tell me about your grandpa. My grandfather was a tobacco farmer from Redwood, Virginia. Um, hard working, simple man that believed in you get out of bed in the morning and go to work, put in a fair day's work, come home, take it easy the rest of the day, go fishing, go rabbit hunting, do whatever, work, you know, just, just have fun. Sounds like a swell guy. Was he part of the restoration? No, no, he passed away in 1998. And this restoration started in 2008. In 2008. And what did you start off with? When I bought the car, it was blue. It was not real rough, but it wasn't to my liking. So six months after buying it, I took it to a buddy's garage and we started tearing it apart. Two days later, it was completely tore apart. No windows, no wiring, no interior, no motor. In two days, you guys did all that? Two days, we took it completely wow. apart. And um, then my, my, myself and my son... We uh, pretty much stripped it down to bare metal. And then when he was eight years old, I got a picture of him after it was painted with a planter's peanut can and a paintbrush, putting tire dressing on the tires to go to our first car show. Wow. We got lucky and won that car show. Um, I've told my son, and it, and it says it here in the, on the board, I gave my word to my son that when I'm done with this car, it's his car. Oh, wow. So I can't sell this car. You're I've been offered a lot of money car. for this car, and I just I can't get rid of it. The Novas are very popular, but I can absolutely understand the sentiment there. Yes. You guys built this together, and wow, it's beautiful. Why the 70 Nova for you? Because I was born in 1970, so it had, to, it had to be the year that I was born. It had to be the year. All right, so let's have a look. Let's start here at the engine. What engines do they normally come? The, this car came with a 402 big block with a four-speed. The 402... Um, it died on me sitting in a garage, so this is actually a 496 built by Kalowski Racing Engines in Rustburg, Virginia. It has a Rock Crusher M22 4-speed with a 12-bolt positive traction 373 rear end. Um, the motor put out close to 800 horsepower to the flywheel. Wow. It runs on 119 racing fuel, just straight 119 racing fuel. This was made to be driven. Yeah, it was made to be driven from point A to B, but I never drive it. it you gets, never drive it? It gets, it gets more miles in the trailer than it does on the high asphalt. So, <laughs> Fair enough. Well, hey, you're saving it for your son. So that, that's right. I can understand that. Loving the Eagle, hey? That was done by David Richards. His uh, nickname is High Volts. He did the pinstriping and the uh, 
eagle and the flag there in the cow induction. Really great guy. Love that you can see everything. Yes. There's also a, there's a beauty in being able to see the wires. You know, a lot of the times we see them get hidden and paneled over, but... We tried to make it as clean as possible. It's very clean, absolutely. Excuse Have you sir. adjusted the body lines at all? Excuse me. Have you done anything to the body lines? No, that's all original it's all as far as the body lines. Wow. Can we have a quick look at the interiors? Yes. Now this is not for sale, but this is great inspiration for people working on Novas. We've kept everything stock. But everything except for the gauges in the console, those are aftermarkets. But everything else is stock. Those are the stock seats that were covered by Rudy's Upholstery, Eddie Utt, in Collinsville, Virginia. I put the uh, headliner in it myself, and as you can see, high volts did pinstripe it on the dashboard over there as well. Loving the When I first told Eddie Utt that I wanted this type of uh, upholstery and I wanted the orange stitching in between the diamonds, he kind of looked at me like I was crazy because the orange matches the orange pinstriping on the car. It works, it works, it really does work. After he... Um, after he did the sample for me, he called me and he said, look, I don't need you to look at a sample. I'm going to go ahead and do it. He so knew exactly how good it looked. Three or four weeks later, he calls me up and he says, are you going to come and get your seats? He said, I've had three or four people try to buy them already, so you need to come and get your seats. Well done on that. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself. Have you always been restoring cars? What do you do as a day job? As a day job, I run R&D Lawn Care. I'm the owner of R&D Lawn Care, R&D Custom Detailing, R&D Pressure Washing, and soon to be R&D Specialties. I'm getting ready to open another business like I really need another business. <laughs> but I started out as a young child, seven, eight years old. My dad ran a service station and his partner had a 1971 Nova, and I fell in lo love with Novas then, and it's continued into my adult life. I've, I've been around hot rods and muscle cars my entire life. I love them. I mean, you You're meet the best- You're an absolute car guy. Yes, and you meet the best people. Now, from West Virginia, before you were telling me about a cruise that happens. Well, I'm in Virginia. Virginia, sorry, not West Virginia. Yeah, I'm, I'm the president of Cruising Rocky Mountain in uh, Rocky Mountain, Virginia. We're 30 miles south of Roanoke. We're 30 miles north of Martinville, Virginia. We are um, pretty well known as the moonshine capital of the world, Franklin County, Virginia. If anybody's out there in land listing and has ever drank any moonshine, I'm sure they've heard of Franklin County moonshine. But um, we have a cruise and event that happens the first Saturday of every month from April to November. We have anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 cars show up in our small town. They come from North Carolina, they come from South Carolina, they come from West Virginia, they come from Tennessee. And the nice thing I like about the cruising events and the car shows, you meet so many nice people. There's so many different causes that you can support and you can help children out, you can help elderly people out. But the nice thing about our cruising events is seeing the elderly people getting their cars out of the garage and coming and having something to do on Saturday night when typically they'd be sitting at home watching television and they're out living and enjoying other people's cars. Love that. 1,500 to 2,000 cars, that's a lot. Yes. How long has it been going on for? This will be the sixth year. The sixth year, yes. okay. Wow, that, that's quick growth. Myself and another gentleman, um, we founded Cruising Rocky Mount on a Sunday, just having a conversation on Facebook. And the next morning, I created the page, and we were off and running. You were off and running. So if people want to get involved and they want to come and check it out, do they have to register, or can they just show no, up? You can just show up. We, uh, we typically have a swap meet four times out of the year. They begin at 8 to 3, 3 o'clock. They happen at the Frank County High School. Then we start our cruising event about 4 o'clock, and it goes till 9 p.m. that night. Wow. We have vendors set up all throughout town. We have food trucks set up all throughout town and people cruise from one end of the town to the other and makes a big circle, so it's a We're lot of We're always fun. looking for car shows that are happening locally or even just across the borderline, yes. so that sounds pretty cool. We'd love to have you in Rocky Mountain. Well, I, well you never know, I'm, any, I'm anywhere, so I'm always traveling. Well, you, 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 would, you would definitely see a lot of different types of cars. Okay, well, love that, absolutely love it. Hey, thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right, everybody, this is something a little rare I've just found out and learned, a Yanko Stinger.
one of only 20. So let's get some more information from Casey. I'm loving the way it's looking, but I do want to find out more. Casey, how are you today? Doing the best I can get away with. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. That's right. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> glad to have yeah. you. Now, you've got something completely different to when I saw you in Louisville. Right. What have you got here today? This is a Yinko Stinger. And uh, people have heard of Yinko and they, they knew of his Stinger Pro. What this is, is one of 20 that Yinko converted for their customers who wanted to race. Back in the day, in the 70s, early 80s, SCCA would not allow Corvairs at their events unless it had a Yinko ID. Now I'll ask you again, why? Why? I don't know. That was just, <laughs> that was just their thing. I, I have no idea why. Was just one of those rules or some politics uh, uh, involved? Uh, hey, who knows anymore? Who knows? Okay, go on. <laughs> but anyhow, like I say, he made it, got the word out. If you were interested in uh, uh, racing and, and uh, things like that nature, he would sell you the parts. Okay. They go parts. And then like the um, there was a kit that he would there sell. There was a kit, okay. You know, you know like, like here, this was a Yinko thing, you know, special. Uh, you know, they, they had different things. The uh, tag, uh, I'm the, guessing, here as well, the sign? The signs, the deck lids. Uh, or carbon fiber that uh, they had available uh, kept the engine cooler if you are participating in a higher rate of speed <laughs> and, then, yeah. and the engine but is in the back engine in the back this is a flat six cylinder four carburetors okay and then yeah but the, the idea is he uh, made it available in fact this is the second one that was converted Wow. By that. But the owner was responsible to put the parts on. He had the kit, and the, and the kit, the owner would do it. And so, initially, if you did that, he would issue a Yanko ID tag. I see. And here, you will see the tag is 301. The, Okay, so this is this is how That's he would how they that. ID the cars. That, that this shows this is the one of twenty. One of twenty, right? Okay. Wow. Now, how did you come across this? Well, uh, I uh, had put the word out for a couple of years that I wanted to buy one for my son case anyhow and through a friend of mine uh, Mike Stillwell and uh, he uh, knew another individual uh, Dave Clemens who have actually came to my house 19 years ago and tuned up my blue car oh, wow. <laughs> that I raced and then anyhow he had it and we were able to, to work things out and I hope he's happy that <laughs> I've taken care of it and my son is excited. But the thing about it, uh, there was a uh, convertible done, which people always wonder about this Yinko convertible. Things strange about that Yinko convertible number is 302. It was the third car that Yinko uh, changed over to a, you know, a Stinger uh, program. And uh, so it's, uh, it's really exciting. It is uh, exciting. And I, and I love the fact that you've got paperwork, documents that show that this, in fact, is one of the 20. Yes, absolutely. And we love seeing rare classics, right. and you've definitely got yourself one. But that's just the front, I'm guessing, at the front here? Yeah, that's just the empty trunk. Okay, <laughs> empty trunk. <laughs> this is normally where you find engines in most cars. <laughs> in our cars, they're in the back. <laughs> and why do you think that is? Is that for performance? Or? I think it was an innovation that Chevrolet came out trying to uh, be competitive in the... Do a, something different? Uh, well, also, uh, it was a lower price. It was okay. more affordable. What was always strange to me is the fact that at, uh, in their advertising, when they advertised Corvette, they would have a Corvair, a little sports car Corvair with it. Yes. So, you know, a lot of people enjoy that, but uh, it is it is fun, and I uh, I'm excited for my son. 
He'll be here tomorrow. And He'll be racing this? No, he ain't going to be racing. He's <laughs> just going to be standing with it. He's just going to be standing with it. <laughs> now, he's the one, he's won more trophies than I have at the track, so I'm not going to worry it's about it. It's all set up. It's all ready to go. I know it is. Now, one thing I would like to point out is the fact that, uh, that the uh, previous owner had done the Hot Rod Power Tour, and they said that it was the first Corvair to complete all four states that oh, wow. they went to. And uh, his tag here. So he got a uh, platinum tag, nice. Platinum tag. And so that was uh, a wonderful achievement on his behalf. So, but. It, well, I can understand why your son wants to keep it. It is a rare car and one of only 20 out there. Right. He wants to hold on to it. And like I say, it, uh, a lot of people are not aware of the that what they call the continuation series, but in the mid 70s, that's Nico decided to do this, make it available to people who had their cars to be able to race them, and I think that's wonderful. Absolutely. Why get a new car when you can just upgrade your existing? Yes, much. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Casey. Appreciate your time. Are we finished? Yep. <laughs> I love walking around and just when things catch my eye, there's a lot of things happening here. We've got some autographs on the dash as well. Charles, how's it going? It's fantastic. How about yourself? I'm good. Love the attitude, you know. <laughs> so many beautiful Corvettes here. We've got classics, we've got moderns, Absolutely. and then you've got something that's modern and a little bit custom. Yes. Well, modern and it's much more, it's more subtle. And okay. So, what have you got? So, I still have like the classic, you know, this is a Sebring orange factory color. So I've added some black chrome wheels to kind of bring out that orange. Um, the car is autographed by the Corvette engineering team. All right, let's go have Corvette, a look at that. No, this is a 2020 model. No, 2020. It's a, one of the first that had came out in 2020. Let's have a look because that those autographs did catch my eye. Yep. All right, so when did you get these so i got them all last year and some this year so last year when i was at the rolex 24 i got taz and mr ron fellows and the corvette racing drivers to sign a car and then i was at corvettes of carlisle last year as well and i got the entire corvette engineering team to sign it and also uh ken lingenfelter who's here and him and his wife are going to be here later today they signed the car last year as well so I love the fact that you went ahead and you got the autographs of the engineers mm -hmm. because out of all the car industries, yep. when it comes to the Corvette, mm -hmm. the engineering behind yes, it, it is, is so phenomenal. From 1953 all the way mm -hmm. to the latest E-Ray, mm -hmm. they're always Doing evolving. something new, yep. They're always looking to push the push boundaries the and do something different. And so, so I can completely understand <laughs> yeah. that. And you're a Corvette guy. Yes, I am. And so <laughs> to have them, the engineers, get back in the car and sign it was like unbelievable. I can understand so. that. Vets for vets. How long have you been a part of that? So I've been a part of them for two years now, hanging out with the guys. So I'm not a veteran, but I am a huge supporter. My dad and my brother are, and my uncles and aunts are nice. military veterans. So yeah, so any chance I can help out. They're an awesome organization, and I met them last year. So I will put a link to last year's Corvette Expo yep. where we did the Dragon Cruise with the Vets for Vets. Yep. So awesome people, and we'll get Jason to come on here and have yep. a chat with us as well. Absolutely. But this is beautiful. Tell me about the engine. So it's a, you know, um, what's this? Uh, LT2, it's 495. You know, so with the aftermarket parts I got on it right now, it's about 500 horsepower. So I got the Sebring on them to kind of match it and look kind of like it's from the factory. So. And what custom work have you done? So just the exhaust and the wheels right now. Beautiful. So. Well, you've met, you've joined with them for two years now, but mm -hmm. you're not going anywhere. No, ma'am. So we were stuck like peas and carrots. <laughs> Where does your passion for Corvettes begin? Oh, uh, for when I first saw my uncle's uh, 2007 C6. Okay. And so when he got his C6, I was like, all right, I can't wait to get older and give me a Corvette. So now this is Corvette number three. So. And Charles, I was telling you before the interview started that the Corvette is the one modern car mm -hmm. that I love just as much as the classics. Yes, ma'am. So I do love that and I've got a big soft spot for it, but this is beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your time. No problem.